You know, so many people have asked me over the last year, how are you managing in the face of all this adversity? And I trust you can relate to this. My response is never have I been so focused on my own personal emotional well-being. And I trust you can relate. But the truth is there is one issue in all the adversity that we face right now that presents an opportunity for change, life-altering change for generations to come. And that issue is sexual assault and sexual harassment. I'm gonna start my story right here at Dartmouth, on the Dartmouth campus. I'll take you back four decades. I was 18 years old, a brand new student on campus, first year, and I was invited on a cold, wintry night, bitter cold, I remember it so clearly, to a party with friends. This is a common, everyday occurrence, and I know if there are students here, you've done the exact same thing. We got dressed and ready, we were excited, went with our friends to a fraternity. I won't name it, but you all know it, it's still here. And we had a great time that evening. We danced, we listened to music, we really enjoyed ourselves at the party. Until in a brief second, I was assaulted, violated, in a crude and insulting way. And I ran, I ran out into the night. It was snowing, it was cold, I didn't have a jacket, and I will never, ever forget that moment. In fact, I ran out, I didn't know where to go and I didn't have any place to turn. And the part that felt so lonely to me in that moment was that he was encouraged. This was somebody I knew. Actually, this was somebody I liked a lot. And his friends all stood around and encouraged him and cheered him on. And I was alone. But I never told anyone. And I came to believe over time that somehow this was my fault. So life went on. I actually love Dartmouth, and I have wonderful lifelong friends. So it's not about Dartmouth, it's about our whole society. Luckily for me, after graduation, I got my dream job. Washington, D.C., I was gonna be a legislative assistant for a member of Congress. I was so excited. I moved into an apartment with friends from Dartmouth, we had a blast, it was really fun. And one day, my boss invited me to join him for a big meeting. The issues we were working on were really meaningful. We were talking about promoting peace in the Middle East and protecting our environment. And I got very involved in ending apartheid in South Africa. And so one day we had a special guest who came distinguished guest of the United States Congress. His name is Dr. Christian Bernard. He was literally on the cover of Time Magazine. He was the man that did the first ever in the world heart transplant. And I was super excited. I was only 23 years old and my boss said to me, would you come to this meeting? And I said, yeah, that sounds really important. I'd like to be a part of that. So we went to the meeting and we were in a restaurant, and this part I'll never forget. I'm seated at the table, my boss is on my right, Dr. Barnard is on my left, and we're having this important discussion about ending apartheid in South Africa. And suddenly, I realize something is terribly wrong. His hand, Dr. Barnard, is under my skirt, in a place it ought not to have been. I just couldn't believe it. I was so shocked. I was so surprised. I was so humiliated and ashamed. And all of the feelings came back to me. But there was nothing I could do. 
I didn't even have the presence of mind to get up and go to the ladies' room. I just sat there with his hand under my skirt in a place it should not have been. And the meeting continued, and I never told anyone. The truth is, I didn't have any place to turn. I was 23 years old, and before Anita Hill, there was no such thing as sexual harassment. It didn't exist. And so I didn't have anybody to tell. And again, I felt this intense shame and this humiliation. And again, somehow, I thought it was my fault. The truth is, I didn't tell anyone for a long, long time. And if this story has some strange sense of familiarity to you, it's because you've heard this quote. And when you're a star, they let you do it. You can do anything. I'm not telling you these stories about myself because they're remarkable or even unique. Sadly, as we've all come to learn, I'm telling you these stories because they're all too common. And the fact is, we have to do something about it. And we have an incredible opportunity right now, each and every one of us, to do something about it. See, I didn't tell anyone for 40 years. I didn't tell my parents at the time. I didn't tell my friends or my roommate. I didn't tell my husband when we got married or for the next 30 years. I didn't tell my two sons who went to Dartmouth. Every once in a while, I'd say, please be nice to people. Make sure that you're not the one that's causing anyone harm. And they'd say, Mom, it wasn't me. I'm a good guy. And the fact is, I'm sure most of you here are. And you're all women who have had or know someone who's had this experience. So finally, I did speak up. You can't go back and change the beginning, but you can start where you are and change the ending. Finally, a year ago, I told my story. I happened to tell it on the floor of the United States House of Representatives. I didn't speak the, pick the most private place. <laughs> but in the end, I spoke up, and I'm proud that I did so. Now, I was inspired by some incredible young women. Emily Doe, you know her as the woman who was sexually assaulted on the campus at Stanford University, left for dead. Her life was saved by two young men from Sweden who came along on a bicycle. And Chessie Proud, 15-year-old girl, sexually assaulted at St. Paul's School in a ritual that's known as Senior Salute. I'm happy to tell you that Chessie has become an extraordinary advocate for survivors. And there are so many survivors out there now who are speaking up and telling their story. And it's really important that we can be a part of that. It's really important to say no more. We have to move on. And we can, and we will. We can do much, much better. We can teach people about consent and what that means, and about better communication. So I'm excited to tell you that we have started a bipartisan task force in Congress with the lofty goal to end sexual violence. And that's what we're going to do with all of your help. So I'm working with my colleague, Representative Jackie Speer, who's a Democrat from California, and my Republican colleagues, Pat Meehan from Pennsylvania and Dave Joyce from Ohio. And we now have 40 members, and we're working together. And we're going to be able to begin to build those bridges that these survivors deserve. And we're going to support survivors in their journey. And we're going to educate members of Congress and the public about how we can come together to end sexual violence in our society. The truth is, we can make a difference, and we will. We'll start with education and prevention. We'll teach children and teens and adults about consent 
and about better communication. And we'll educate law enforcement and judges and juries so they understand these concepts of fight, flight, or freeze. And they understand the influence of age and alcohol and intimidation on the capacity to consent. And we'll make sure that everyone gets a fair process and that survivors get trauma-informed treatment so that they can go on to strong, resilient lives. The truth is that survivors are coming forward all across this country. Just in the last few weeks, the hashtag MeToo campaign has been extraordinary. It's taken off. It feels exponential to me. The fact that so many women of all ages have been a part of this. And I've come to believe that my generation, from being silent for 40 years, has become complicit in creating this toxic culture of sexual assault and sexual harassment. And so I intend to speak up and take a stand. And I intend to support all of those women that are coming forward in the Me Too campaign. And the fact is, you can be a part of that too, because they can't do this by themselves, nor should they. You can make a difference. You can open up your heart. You can speak up and speak out. You can stand up. You can take a stand. Your voice matters in this. Men and women, young and old, all of us have a role to play because it's in the workplace, it's in the campus, it's in our families, it's with our friends. I mean, think about this. The conversations that you have, and they're difficult. I'll be the first to say these are difficult conversations. But we have an opportunity right now to talk to one another and to share our ideas about this. Your voice matters. That person who you're talking to is someone's father or son, friend or husband. But think about this. The perpetrator is someone's husband. The harasser is someone's father. So you can make a difference, and we all have to stand up and stand out. We have to believe survivors. That's the first step. The three most important words that any survivor can hear, I believe you. That's all you have to know. And you can be there for someone. You can be there for a friend. I had a friend yesterday tell me who I have known for 50 years. And she stood in my kitchen and told me about being raped in the back of a car when she was 17 years old. She never told anyone. And do you know what she said to me? In my kitchen yesterday, she said, I never should have gotten into that car with him to go buy beer. And I said to her, he never should have raped you in the back of that car. I mean, we've got this all turned around, and we can do so much better. Write a letter. Call Congress. Better yet, run for office. Your voice matters. You can make a difference. And it's really important. Just listen, be there, believe, and then take the next step and have those difficult conversations. Here's the thing. I remember ashtrays in restaurants. I remember smoking on airplanes. I remember car accidents and fatalities before we even had seat belts. And I can remember the death toll and the fear from AIDS, HIV. But guess what? Times do change. We can create change. Ordinary people living ordinary lives can make extraordinary change. So please join us. Join this movement. Stand up, speak out. Your voice matters. 
because we can make a difference, and we will. We can do it. We can end sexual violence. Yes, we can. Thank you.